All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming out today. Uh, I know we're kind of holding you back from your weekend, uh, but I think we have something pretty cool to show you today. So we'll be talking about GPU accelerated containers on Apple Silicon with libkiron and Podman Machine. So uh, my name is Jake Carenti. I'm an associate software engineer at Red Hat. Uh, I'm on the virtualization team. And I work primarily on confidential computing, um, but I do dabble in Podman Machine still. Uh, and then here with me is Tyler Finelli. He's a software engineer also at Red Hat. And he also works on confidential computing on the virtualization team. So I know most of you probably know a lot about Podman already, but I just wanted to do a quick recap. So Podman's an OCI compliant container management tool. And you can use Podman to create and manage your containers on Linux. So with that out of the way, let's talk about Mac OS containers. OK, that might have been a lie because they don't exist. So containers as we know them are, in fact, a Linux paradigm, which means they're, bu they're built on uh, existing Linux technology like is C groups, namespaces, and SE Linux. So that makes doing native Mac containers quite difficult. So you might be thinking, if containers are a Linux paradigm, then how would Podman run them on Mac OS? And maybe to some of you, the unexpected answer is, in fact, virtualization. So Podman machine has a subcommand, Podman has a subcommand called Podman machine. And this will actually create a Linux virtual machine on your Mac OS host. And when you're creating and managing your containers, you're actually doing it through this Linux virtual machine. So booting up this virtual machine is actually quite simple. It's this single command in your terminal. And you can see here, it'll pull the image, it'll configure your virtual machine, and then it'll start it. And it only takes about you know, 10 seconds. So in Podman Machine, there's this notion of a provider. And a provider is really just a virtual machine monitor, or a VMM. And it's used to manage the life cycle of your virtual machine. So by default, on macOS, Podman uses the Apple hypervisor provider. And this uses Apple's provided virtualization framework. And Podman will communicate with this framework for all of its VM communication and, inter and interaction. So let's dive into that a little bit. So the virtualization framework that Apple provides is really just this abstraction for some low-level OS primitives that you would typically use when creating your virtual machines. And under the hood, which we'll talk about later, it also uses another framework provided by Apple called the hypervisor framework. And this deals with even more low-level abstractions like CPU and memory. But what you're getting out of the virtualization framework is really a high-level API to create some standard virtual machines. And this hides all the details from the user about CPU architecture, virtual devices, et cetera. So this framework is great for your cookie cutter virtual machines. But when it comes to more resource intensive tasks, um, things like GPU usage or gaming, AI, there's a couple problems that come to light. So first of all, Apple uses a custom downstream version of VertIOFS. And this causes issues where things like UIDs can't be changed, or SE Linux labels are blocked on read-only file systems. The most notable one, which we'll talk about later, is there's no GPU pass-through. And then you know, I work at Red Hat. So the framework is closed source, and it's dependent on Apple, which means there's no way to fix these issues ourselves. So the key takeaway here is if your application wants to use a GPU for things like gaming or AI, you need better performance. And if your application wants to share files with the host, you're going to need better VertIOFS support. As I was introduced, I'm Tyler. Um, so as we just said, uh, there's some problems with virtualization framework in the Apple hypervisor. So as we just noted, it uses hypervisor framework. So we'll take a look at what that does to see if we can use that. Um, what the uh, hypervisor framework is, it's one level lower in the you know, uh, Mac OS virtualization stack. And it's lower level virtualization primitives, such as managing vCPUs, managing VertIO vert devices directly. Um, a good analogy that you can say is that uh, hypervisor framework it could be equivalent to something like QMU that would, you would use on a command line, when the hypervisor framework is uh, more equivalent to 
actually interacting with Linux KVM MyOctals directly. Um, so you're at a lower level. There's uh, a bit more freedom uh, to what you can implement with then virtualization framework, but there's more management involved, which virtualization framework abstracts away for you. So with virtualization framework, it's a bit easier to manage your VMs, but you don't have the freedom to do that. So uh, with the existing problems that we've seen with virtualization framework, we wanted to see if we could use hypervisor framework, go a bit uh, deeper down and, and, and try to uh, make our problems uh, go away. So uh, that brings us to uh, libk run. Um, and what libk run basically is, it started as just a, uh, a dynamic library. It provides VM-based process isolation. The original uh, usage of libk run was you could run a process, uh, a, a micro VM, what we call a very small VM, uh, just to run a process with the virtualization sandboxing capabilities. Um, it was originally uh, a Linux only, but um, on Mac OS, we took advantage of the hypervisor framework to um, basically bring our same Linux functionality and bring it to Mac OS. Um, it's open source, uh, of course, so um, we're able to use the hypervisor framework directly and fix some of the problems that virtualization framework um, uh, ignores. Um, also with this, we don't have a dependency on Apple. We can fix it ourselves. Anybody else can come and fix uh, problems. Um, and you don't, you, know, you don't have the closed source uh, uh, hurdle. A few features that we added so far to libk run on, on uh, Mac OS is GPU pass-through. We improved the vert IOFS support, added SMBIO support, scrollable serial console, lo uh, serial console, log boot messages to a file. This was all um, things that we were desiring with virtualization framework. We were able to add, or, add it to ourselves with libk run. Um, so we have the libkrun EFI flavor. Libkrun has a number of flavors uh, depending on where you run it. Um, one of them is EFI. Uh, it's a, it, it closely resembles a virtualization framework. It actually only runs on Mac OS at the moment, though we, we want to uh, have it work on um, Linux at some point. And I guess the, the biggest feature that it added is that um, we added the Apple Venus capable VertIO GPU device, so you can run something in a uh, libk run guest, you could run something like Vulkan Info Summary, and you could uh, get some information about your, um, your Apple GPU. So with libk run on Podman machine, uh, you know, we've seen the um, problems with virtualization framework before, and for resource demanding applications, we need uh, something different with Podman Machine. Um, as of uh, version 5.2, Podman introduced libk run as the supported provider for VMs on Mac OS. Uh, you can set it, Apple H, the Apple hypervisor is still the default, but you are able to configure the um, uh, configuration file to run uh, libk run instead, and we'll show how to do that. But um, for your resource demanding applications, you can use libk run to run the VMs instead of the Apple hypervisor using the virtualization framework instead. Um, and just how to try that, it's very simple. You modify the uh, containers.com file um, in Mac OS. You change the machine. Um, there's a machine subsection. You can change the provider. It, you would usually say Apple HV. You can just change that to libk run. And you'll be able to, uh, all, all the glue is in place in Podman to start using libk run instead. So a quick demo of doing exactly this. Um, I have two videos. I'm going to run two AI. I'm going to run the same AI model. Uh, the first one, I'm going to run it on Apple HV. And the second one, I'm going to run it with libk run. And we're going to see the performance and resource differences. Uh, this is the first one with Apple HV. It's 12 and a half minutes long. I'm not going to play the whole thing. I'm going to skip through minute by minute. And you'll be able to see the performance. So if we start. Real quick, we're just running the Mistral uh, 7B Instruct AI model. It's a chatbot, like we said. Uh, I allocated about six CPUs and about eight gigs of RAM to this VM. So it's, uh, it definitely has uh, sufficient resources um, as far as uh, you know, running something goes. So we'll start off and we'll skip about to about two minutes in. If you notice, uh, the model is just, here we are. The prompt is tell me a very short story. We're about two and a half minutes in. And if you notice, this is when the uh, model is starting to run. If you notice the user CPU usage, which is the VM, it's at about 70% CPU load. Um, so it's this, uh, this machine's getting a pretty thorough exercise with 
um, as CPUs are concerned. And so it's running at about 70% uh, CPU load and we have nothing yet. So we'll skip ahead about a minute and a half to four minutes. We have two words written. Skip ahead to about five and a half minutes. We have a prompt starting. Notice that we're still at 70% CPU load about. So it's not, uh, it's not just stalling, it's running. It's uh, just very slowly doing these um, training and whatnot. So if we skip ahead to about seven minutes, we have the first aside. Skip ahead to about nine minutes. We have something starting to be written, a day. Skip ahead to about 11 minutes, a day in the life of. Skip about to almost the end, we have a day in the life of an ESL teacher. Notice the entire, that's a, I, I asked for a short story, it gave me a very short story, so, but it was running at about 70% CPU load the entire time, um, and we have that. So that was with Apple HV, um, and we'll look at the same thing with libk run. Um, I'm gonna let this one run, it runs for about a minute. What I want uh, everybody to notice is, you'll be able to see the model running, of course, but I would also like you to notice the CPU load when the model starts running. Um, this is with GPU pass-through and offloading to GPU. So I'll uh, run the same model. I'll tell it to tell me a very short story with GPU pass-through. And we can see it starts running uh, pretty good. And if you notice the CPU load, I think it eventually hovers around 5% once everything is done. And you can, have, you can see that everything's starting to be offloaded. Uh, the model is running this time and is you know, being offloaded. But not sure how long this would have taken, taken us with the first example, but uh, I think the performance kind of speaks for itself. So yeah, we hover around 5% CPU load. That's because everything training uh, required is offloaded to the GPU. Um, so you're able to see that, and we have a short story that's just told. Um, so with that, we have some future work. Uh, that we can kind of talk about. Um, we just released, so support was uh, released in version 5.2 of Podman, um, and Podman Machine can take advantage of this on, um, on Mac OS. And it's also usable from AI Lab and Podman Desktop. Uh, one thing that we're looking to add is sparse file support, so you can have different uh, virtual machine images, such as like QCAL2. And uh, we also want to add support for input devices like keyboards and mouses. Um, that's on our roadmap from now on. Uh, but that's, that's Podman Machine running on Mac OS now and being able to take advantage of, of, some, of some of the new features in the Apple machines. Um, there's a blog post on the containers uh, uh, organization's blog that you can uh, look at to, to read about it. It's from Brett Bowdy. He's the one that added the support to Podman Machine. And uh, yeah, you can read about it. Uh, and we also, everything's open source, so you can come contribute yourself. There's libkrun uh, proper you can contribute to. There's krun kit, that's kind of the glue that molds. Yeah. Podman machine um, produces a uh, command line for a, um, a, a binary called krun kit that kind of drives libkrun. Um, so you can contribute that too. And then of course there's Podman. So this is all in the containers namespace on, on GitHub. Uh, you, know, you can check it out, uh, try it for yourself if something goes wrong. Uh, let us know or contribute to fix yourself. And uh, with that, is there any questions? Hi there. I actually have two questions. Um, have you compared uh, libk run with the Hypo, uh, Apple hypervisor or the virtualization framework without a GPU. I mean, uh, the, the, the difference is so huge that it almost makes us think that, I mean, they're doing something wrong with, with the Apple virtualization, right? So it run, Usually if you're just running a standard VM, uh, unless it's something resource intensive, you won't know, you probably won't notice much. Uh, if you're not running anything that's offloaded to a GPU, I mean, virtualization framework still runs your VMs uh, on the, on the uh, hardware, so. 
well, like we said, virtualization framework is fine for cookie cutter VMs that are not some of the resource. So if you if you don't have the same problems like you know GPU pass through, have something like that, you can probably get the same performance out of Apple HV, and that's why it's still the default in Podman. Yeah, uh, maybe related to the this answer, the, the the last thing you said, um, when you download then Podman machine, I mean if you if you're not interested in developing that, is that already included with the latest release in Podman? You don't need to build K run unit. And libk run separately. It's all part of the same package. Libk run and krun kit are both included already. All you have to do is specify. It's included in the Podman machine uh, build on on macOS as a 5.2. Thank you. Uh, can you comment on an interesting company that has uh, committed some fixes to K libk run recently? Other than Red Hat? Yes. Yes, uh, Docker. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks.